there was four things that stood out to me. So I'd okay. like to go through them with you all, get your reaction here. Please feel free to chime in, gentlemen. You ready? Yep. All right, number one thing jumped out to me was that when Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are on, they are the best remaining duo in the playoffs. Now, hear me out, Golden State folks. I know. Yes. Steph and Clay, they are absolutely still the better duo when you take the long lens career view. But right this second, the Celtics are the only team this postseason with two top 15 scorers. Shout out Researcher Caesar for that. They're combining to average 50 points per game this postseason. So, Perk, since you're captain all things Celtics, what do you yeah. think? I agree. And look, you don't have to justify to the Golden State Warriors fans why you're saying the Jays are the top duo in the postseason. And they are. And look, let me address something else real quick if I have time. Okay, a lot of people want to say, oh, well, Perk, you was talking about breaking them up in the middle of the season. They were 23 and 25 at the moment. More than half of the season had been played, okay? And then all of a sudden they had one of the greatest turnarounds in regular season history. And now they're starting to click. Now you starting to see the camaraderie between the two that we have never seen before. And so when you saw Jalen Brown say, uh, he, he made the tweet and say, oh, the energy is about to shift. That was after I made those comments. And so I'm glad I, I ruffled the feathers a little bit. I'm actually taking credit, but you're, uh -huh. actually, you're absolutely right. They are the best duo in playoffs. And look, I'll back you up on this. Listen, when the facts change, so can our opinions, right? Like, that's just Amen. a normal thing. When the facts change, the opinions can change. And when a team is 23 and 25, they'd been to multiple conference finals, it looked like their team had really fallen flat, and then all of a sudden they start balling. So now people are like, yo, they might be the team favorite to continue on and win a championship. So I'll back you up. I'm glad that those guys picked it up and started playing the level that they're capable of. So I'm going to bring it back to the actual thing that you <laughs> talked about <laughs> instead of this retrospective history thing. yes you're absolutely <laughs> correct this is 2022 it's not 2018 or 2017 anymore clay thompson's coming off two traumatic injuries by the way it looks fantastic yeah all things considered but he's not quite the same guy draymond has been kind of weirdly up and down particularly on offense mm. in the playoffs he's still a superstar in his own kind of way but it's it's tatum and brown they're the best duo left and i don't really think it's arguable all right so go into my thing number two then okay. if we could gentlemen if the Heat have any chance of winning this series, they need Kyle Lowry to return to regular season form. In the regular season, he averaged over 13 points per game. Postseason, he just hasn't been that. The Heat are three and five when he plays. So bronze burgundy, you're making a face. Go ahead. <laughs> I agree. That will help. But I think more importantly, when you look at Jimmy Butler, four for 18, when you look at Bam, uh, Bam Adebayo, yes, he had 18 and 10, but he was also a minus 23. Right. If you're talking about the hierarchy in the Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler returning to regular, not won't say regular season, early rounds, Jimmy Butler. And I think Bam, Bam Adebayo, but you're right. Kyle Lowry allows easier shots for the Tyler Hero, for, for, um, for Bam and for Jimmy Butler. So Kyle Lowry is a very important important piece because I think it allows the rest of those guys to go be the best version of themselves. You know what? I, I agree, but I can't let Bam off the hook. I agree. Kyle Lowry has to do more, but we're asking a guy that's pretty much past his prime to come in pretty and much? contribute. Yeah, I mean, he hey, is. He is. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He is past his prime. I'm, 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 at, I'm trying to figure out when is Bam going to take that leap, right, and be considered the best player on the team and be a, 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 a number one, number two option that you can lean on? Like, right now, 18 and 10 is cool, but that's not good enough. Like, in today's league, you need those 30 and 15s and sometimes those 40 and 20s. And we saw last series, even that's not good enough. Consistency from him and just showing that he actually could lead this franchise and be a franchise player. He's the one not getting it done. Look, the issue of the series is the Heat cannot score in the half court. The only time they can score is when they get offensive rebounds or when they force turnovers. They're scoring at a rate in the half court that would have been last among all teams in a regular season by far. That's not just Lowry. That's Lowry. That's Butler. That's Struess hasn't made a shot in two games. That's Tyler Hero has missed the last two games. Bam's been, I think, fine. He took over the game last night. It was too little, too late. But it's not just Lowry. By the way, Lowry had some personal issues this year, serious family issues that took him yeah. away from the team. I yeah. think that affected his rhythm. He and Jimmy Butler are clear clearly playing hurt. Jimmy Butler ran 13 pick and rolls last night. That's one of his lowest figures of the whole season. They basically stopped giving him the ball and turned him into a scream setter in the last half of the game. That tells you everything you need to know. He's just that they, it, it, we can sit here and say they need this, they need that. If their bodies can't give right. them that, can't then go. I don't know what else, with the, what else to do. Okay, my thing number three, it pains me. I have taken off my CBS hat. I have put down my Cuban coffee, coffee because I, I'm, I'm tempted to say that we're not coming back to Miami, but 
this Eastern Conference Finals. It's been so topsy-turvy. I'm going to say that this series is by far the most unpredictable of the postseason so far. I just can't bring myself to fully commit to it being over. Zach, are you committed? I think you need to at least start taking the first steps there and, and put it in your mind space that we might not be coming back to Miami because given what I just said about the whole Heat team basically being banged up, their complete inability to score in the half court against a defense that was by far the best defense in the NBA for the second part of the season and number one overall, it would really surprise me if the Heat went into Boston and extended this series. Oh, we're not coming back. <laughs> we are not coming you're just, back. You're less polite than me, Frank. No, no, you're saying no, it. No, I'm telling you straight up, we're not coming back. Listen, it's going to be rocking in the garden in game six. Jalen Brown, Jason Taylor, and that team know that they're one win away from the finals. And guess what? The last time the Heat were in this position, you know, facing a being down 3-2, they had a guy by the name of LeBron James. Well, LeBron James ain't walking through that door. He ain't putting on the Heat uniform. No time soon, if ever. So at the end of the day, we're going to Boston. I expect them to win in great fashion. Well, look, I don't think it's disrespectful to say the truth, right? I don't think it's. I don't think. I don't think it's disrespectful. I don't think it's disrespectful to say the truth. Where's my one shot? Let me. Let me where's my one shot? Do I do it? Are we going to keep showing these highlights? Yeah, yeah. More Mark. Okay, there's my one shot. How's that look? How's it look? Look, this is the last time that I'm going to get a Cuban coffee here. This is the last time I'm going to be able to wear a pink shirt with five buttons down, a rock sunglass. Right, okay, okay, that's, just, that's just not the Miami vibe, right? That's not it. So this is going to be the last time we're here. And it's not, be and it's not because of Miami. In my, and it's, it's because of the respect that I think Boston is starting to gain and get together. And unfortunately, Miami's just banged up. When you're no time, you don't have the six man of the year that averaged 20 off the bench. Then, then, you know, Kyle Lowry's going through things. Jimmy Butler's not 100% healthy. They're just struggling across the board. For them to even force a game six in my, or a, yeah, a game seven would be like a win for their season. Just Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.